Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, we are very excited about this topic. It's uh, one of our most frequently requested topics on staff training. Uh, so as a reminder, if you could just put your first name and organization so that we know where you're from. And uh, if you're willing and able to put on your camera, we love seeing your smiling faces. Professor Dave loves interacting with everyone. Um, and we will have a question and answer session at the end scheduled as well. Um, so we do have a few more town halls before we pause in, until August. Uh, next Wednesday, we have COCA members who have already offered in-person programs in spring 2022. Then May 10th, we have our partners at Flashes of Hope coming to tell us a little bit about their program and what they can do for your camp. On May 25th, we have more partners of ours. Uh, Kids Kicking Cancer will be coming to tell you a little bit about the programs they can offer your camp as well. And then May 31st, we wrap everything up with Dr. Rafi returning to give us his final COVID-19 update. And as a reminder, all of our sessions are available on Outside the Box um, if you ever wanted to refer back. And without further ado, I'm, I'm very proud and happy to introduce Professor Dave Malter, who is the director of the Gratz College Masters in Camp Administration and Leadership. I can tell you from firsthand experience, it is quite the program. It is extremely beneficial and I will be done next year. Proud graduate. Uh, so Professor Dave is here to talk about staff training. So I will turn it over to you, Professor Dave. Thank you very much, Ryan. I appreciate it. Hi, everybody. How are you? I'm going to talk to you while I share my screen and you get to see the mystery of what it looks like before I play, uh, which is, I never had not figured out how to do this the right way yet. So there you go. There we are. I'm excited to be here. Uh, thank you again for having me. Thanks to Ryan and Jennifer for asking me to be here tonight. Um, probably more excited than Ryan. I don't know if it's possible, but I'll try. Uh, but it's great to be here. I'm gonna jump right into it. And as Ryan said, we're gonna talk a lot about staff training tonight. Uh, I'm actually gonna back up just a little bit and talk about now because I think staff training has already started um, and it probably starts during the interview. Uh, and I'm gonna give you some, some tips, some best practices, some danger areas, some background. Um, what you could be doing now during staff training and then even during camp. So I think we are responsible for helping train staff even during the summer. I don't think it stops uh, once camp starts. So the goal is really to get staff engaged and get them on your mission from as early as you can. So when they get to camp, they are ready to go. Uh, I will obviously pause here and there to, to throw out some questions. But if you have any questions or comments throughout, throw them up in the chat. Um, I'll ask Ryan to help me out. Um, if anything comes up that I need to answer, um, he'll, he'll interrupt me um, and let me know. So let's get started. This is young Professor Dave, uh, before uh, he even knew what a professor was probably. So this is me at about age 12. Uh, this is the year before I started working at camp. Uh, this is at a campsite that was temporary because the original campsite that we were at, we got kicked out of for a couple of years for some licensing issue. Well, that we didn't have a license. So uh, it, uh, it was a day camp. Uh, this particular site was about a 45 minute bus drive uh, from my house. And for a kid who got car sick, that was really fun. But so this is me at, at 12 in my fake Michael Jordan uh, t-shirt. Uh, you could, if those of you who are familiar with Burlington Coat Factory, which is now just Burlington, a uh, big upgrade, I hear. That's where the shirt is from. I remember well when my grandmother took us shopping there. Uh, the painter's cap I'm wearing uh, with my very well-bent cap uh, shows that orange has been my favorite color for a long time. Thank you to Luke Skywalker, uh, who wore an orange jumpsuit, flying suit uh, in Star Wars. And then I have what are called jammers on. So these are bathing suits uh, with the entire galaxy on them, which is pretty exciting. Uh, there's a picture uh, of all my counselors out there. And one of my counselors is actually wearing those 
that bathing suit in the picture because you probably stole them from me. And I'm sure my parents are still very upset with me about that. But this is me as an awkward young man, uh, 12 years old. School was a very tough place for me socially, not academically, because I was kind of a bookish kid. I liked, like I said, Star Wars and comic books and baseball cards. And I read a lot. I still do. Maybe it's why I became a professor. So camp was really a place where I could be myself. Uh, and that was really because of staff and counselors. And like I said, this was a camp that I traveled a little bit to on bus. It was a day camp. And my best friend who I ended up going to camp with since I was seven and then ended up running a camp with, uh, he lived in Connecticut and I lived in Westchester in New York. And the camp happened to be halfway. Uh, and that's how we met. We never would have met otherwise. It was well before uh, any internet was even an idea when we met. And you know, 1980s boys were not great about staying in touch over the phone during the year. So we would never have stayed in touch or, or known anything, but we stayed friends for all these years and we're now best friends. So this is me, it was a awkward time in my life, but I do think camp is transformational because this is a little bit about me now, right? Uh, you'll see that I now get up in front of large audiences. I do these kind of sessions. I've done it all over the world. I've done it in the UK. I've done it in Australia. Uh, I go all over the country. Uh, Jennifer and Ryan were just asking about kind of my travel schedule coming up and the next two months are pretty uh, overwhelming. And you know, I'll probably go to about 30 or so camps in the next two months, uh, helping training and doing some talks for AM Sky, who you just saw. Uh, that's my wife, Pam, by the way, in, in that picture. Uh, she is a full-time camp director in the Poconos. We met actually at the Tri-State Camp Conference 13 years ago. So camp can change lives. And I never would have imagined that 12-year-old Dave would turn into somebody who could get up in front of audiences of 600 or more and be a trusted person to talk about staff training and insurance and risk management and all of those things. I think my parents are still a little bit, uh, you know, confused. Uh, but, and I, I owe a lot of it to camp and my counselors and the people who took care of me and encouraged me to be who I am. And that's what we want to encourage our staff to do. We want to encourage them to lead other young people to become the people that they are. At this point though, I really think that for me personally, I talk a lot about staff because that's where I think I can make the most impact. I am 44 going on 45. I know, thank you, hard to believe, uh, but it's true. And I don't have that connection with campers anymore, right? I'm the old guy and I don't understand a lot of, or really any of their music. I don't understand the culture that they're in. Uh, the things that they watch, TikTok, those, I'm not in tune with it. And I think that's okay. So for me, it's really about staff now. For me, I look at staff as what can I help this person with, send them back into the world outside of camp, a better prepared, more confident, uh, better person. What, what kind of impact can I have? So that's why I really love talking about this topic because it's had staff and counselors and camp directors throughout the years have had such a profound influence on me that I want to pass that forward. And uh, obviously, I can't do it for all staff across the country, but hopefully this inspires you a little bit to think a little bit differently about how we manage people and how we train them. So that's, that's where I'm coming from. Um, but first, we have to understand what's going on with our staff a little bit more. And I, th I don't think anybody on here really needs a lecture on that. I think you're all probably up to speed, but you have to understand that in the world, 30% of people who have jobs are actually actively engaged in their work. There's a lot of distractions. Uh, remote work has probably uh, decreased this number because when you're not in an office with somebody who can just pop in, maybe you're more likely to take a walk during the day uh, or zone out or go look at something else. So engagement at work, and I think this follows through to your staff as well, is pretty low. Uh, so how do we encourage people to be more engaged is a question. Generational needs. You know, I mentioned earlier, I'm a middle-aged guy now. And, the and, and it's not a generational thing and that one's better than the other. This has always been the case. 
the generation before me probably said a lot of not nice things about my generation. The generation before them probably said the same thing, right? This is just the way we are. Things change. The world changes. We just happen to be in the midst of probably the fastest change there's ever been. You know, I, I used to teach freshman English uh, in New Jersey at Montclair State University, freshman cop. And I used to talk about, think about the way communication has changed, right? We went very quickly from sending mail by pigeon to horse, to boat, to train, to plane, to car, to email. I'm sorry, there was a fax machine in the middle there, right? Which my parents still have their fax machine with the roll up paper. I don't know who's faxing them. I don't wanna know, but think about that change. Think about that rapid change that has never happened before. And it's only increased with the internet and the way to get information and the way we talk to each other and you know Slack and instant messaging and all of those things. It's, it's happened quickly and the world is moving quickly and changing quickly. And you know when you used to take a communications course like a business communications course like I did in college, they talked about global economies and, you know, learning other people's cultures. Well, that's like blown out of the water now, right? Because I can talk to people, you know, I do it all the time. I talk to people in China, you know, I'm up at two in the morning talking to people in China, right? There is no barrier anymore. Uh, it is just accessible. So we have to, as managers, as people who are in charge of others, we have to be the ones to change. We have to be the ones to adjust and think about how we are managing people. Uh, we don't know all the time what our staff need because we're not asking them enough questions. We're very good at telling them things and putting things into our, in our, to our orientations and things like that, but we're not very good about asking them what their needs are and what their goals are and why they're there and what they want to get out of this and what they're happy about or not happy about. So we need to spend some more time doing that and really getting to know them. Um, there is definitely a skills deficiency in communication skills. Uh, it is very hard to get anything out of anybody. I have a 14 year old nephew who just stayed with us for three days here in Philadelphia on his spring break. And he's the greatest kid, super smart. We have a very close relationship, but he was good for like talking to us for about three minutes at a clip. And then he would start like slinking up the stairs toward when he was just kind of done. There was no end to the conversation, it was just, he started leaving. And I was like, hey, buddy, are you, are you done? He said, yeah, I'm going to go. In. And he would just leave. I mean, the, he just couldn't three, four minutes at a time. And he's a pretty smart kid, you know, does well in school, lives in New York City. But that was it. Three or four minutes was his limit. So we have to think about how communication skills have changed and how we can adapt. And it's something that my first boss at that camp that you saw taught me. It's called the curse of knowledge, right? Um, we know what the big picture is. The people on this call understand how camp works. They understand how um, they understand how food service works. How all of these things work. They get it, right? Or we get it. I'm sorry. They do not. They have. No, they know what you've told them, and they know take care of these kids. Right? They don't get the big picture. When I talk to private camps about this, think about it. If you're a staff member who comes to a private camp of let's say $10,000 a summer and they have 500 kids, all the people who work there know is that somebody's making $5 million, everybody here is rich and they don't care about anything, which we all know is not the case. Right? So we have to make sure that we're attuned to that and we're giving them enough and we're explaining how things work. It's also a generation that I think is perfectly valid, and I wish I had been more willing to do this when I was younger, that asks a lot of questions and asks why. Why they're being asked to do certain things, why things work certain ways, what the goal is. You know, it's not done out of them not wanting to participate or not wanting to listen. It's really just they need to know more and they want to know what, where they're coming from and what, what direction they should be approaching it. They're, they're just asking questions and that's okay. And we should take the time to answer those questions. So when we think about staff training or we think about camp in general, 
this is how staff are coming to you if they're new and even some returners, right? And the past couple of years have really kind of amped this up because not only are they lost and confused coming to camp, a lot of them are lost and confused just in life right now because it's been a devastating couple of years for, for staff that we're hiring. It's been really hard. You know, I teach college courses. I teach at Temple here in Philly online. And when COVID first started and for the first two or three semesters, when kind of campus closed and everybody had to go home, I mean, my, my classes became just opportunities for them to vent and cry uh, because I had students from Brazil, students from Trinidad and Tobago who within 24 hours had to find their way home. They're 19 years old by themselves in America. And then beyond that, once they figured out where they're gonna live or what they're going to do, the stress of being home or not being in the environment they thought we're gonna be or not being able to work or whatever it might be, it's been really hard. Um, so they're coming to camp with all this, this baggage, all of these issues, and then they're coming there and they're very confused, they're lost. They don't know what they're supposed to do. And I'm gonna ask a question and you can raise your hand, you can put it in the chat, you can choose not to answer, but just know in your head what the answer is. How many of you, when staff first get to camp, the first thing you do is either like a lice check or have them fill out paperwork? You can put up your little hand, your emoji hands, or not admit it, but I know you're out there. Ryan raised his hand and he knew it was coming because uh, we've talked about it, but why? Okay, so their W-9 or whatever it's called isn't filled out when they get to camp. They're going to be there for how long? Do it at lunch, right? Do it at dinner, do it the next day. This is camp. When they show up at camp, they should be having fun. I'm gonna say it again later, but throw a party. Have a party when they get to camp. Have everybody get there at the same time and throw a party. Make it seem like camp. The paperwork will get done, think about it. If you're 19, 20, 25, whatever age you are, and you're coming to this strange place where you're coming to work for not such, such great money or money at all, right? And the first thing that happens is somebody comes up to you and says, you need to fill this out and they throw a bunch of paperwork in your face. Think about how that might feel. So understand that what their mindset is, get into their frame of mind. So really what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about how we can get staff engaged. Um, and a lot of this is creating this kind of empathy that we're looking for between you and your staff. We want that us versus them to go away. We're trying to get people together and they, you need them and they need you. So what we're trying to do is take some of those barriers away so they can trust you and listen to you and the important things come through. Uh, and, and some of the other things get out of the way. So we're gonna talk about right now, and I'm not trying to scare you. I know that seems really scary that time is running out. I just really liked the graphic uh, and I wanted to use it, but don't be scared, you're gonna be okay. Uh, I don't want anybody to get scared. Uh, well, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about staff training and then we're gonna talk about camp. So those are kind of the three big areas we're gonna look at and kind of how we can get staff more engaged. So, here are some things we can do now. So set up a mentor program. If anybody does that, feel free to raise your hand, throw a yes in the chat, whatever you want. If you have some sort of mentorship program for returning staff and new staff, or even new staff to new staff, um, feel free to throw that out. The important thing about a mentorship program is it's gotta be really, thank you, Cindy. It's gotta be really intentional, right? Um, it's, it can't just be, hey, Dave, you're gonna be Ryan's buddy, he's new to camp. So make sure you reach out to him a couple of times before camp starts and make sure he's, he's excited about camp. That's not going to work. It needs to be structured. It needs to be set up by you. There needs to be some sort of questions that you're driving, right? That you're feeding, right? Me to Ryan, right? If Ryan's the new, new staff member and use something like Slack, or group chat or all these other technologies that are out there where you're setting up groups and you can be on the outside. They don't even need to know that you're there and you can watch the conversations. I think somebody mentioned Discord in another session that I did. There's another one you could, you could set up your own groups. And then give Dave 
who's spending this time with Ryan an incentive and say, if you do this the right way, I'm going to give you a sweatshirt, right? Or maybe a couple hours off or whatever you can manage in your environment. But it's really got to be intentional. It can't just be thrown out there. So mentorship, think about mentorship. Um, it's a great way to get people. What does your online presence look like? Is it just some like nice pictures that you're putting up on your social media? Or is there some sort of specific knowledge you're trying to get them to understand, right? What do you need them to know before they get to camp? Really think about it. And then do as many live opportunities like this as you can. And record them, obviously. And again, incentivize it. You're gonna hear me say that a lot. If you show up to five out of the seven recorded things we're gonna do between now and camp, you'll get an extra ice cream. I don't know, I'm making that up, right? Give them something meaningful. If there's something special at your camp or make something special, right? Make something up, a special t-shirt, a hat, a mug, uh, whatever it is, a Frisbee, something that they can look forward to getting. And they know it's not gonna be you know, hundreds of dollars, but it's something meaningful that they'll get if they perform this certain task, right? But it's gotta be specific. So think about, really drill down, what do you need them to know? And then tell your story. So you are a brand. As an employer, you are still a brand. So what is your brand? What's your message? What images are you gonna use? How do you want camp to feel? How do you want to describe it in the images that you're using? Really be super focused on that. What, this is to staff, right? This is on your, so hopefully you have a separate Facebook staff page, separate camp Instagram for staff, all these different groups that they can just be a part of, talk to each other, get to know each other. But then you have the opportunity to kind of show them what camp is and what camp feels like through this imagery, through language, whatever works for your camp. And you probably already have it. You just have to put it in the right medium is really important. Uh, and then this is gonna be kind of a recurring theme, but sharing knowledge. And some of it's subliminal, right? Some of it's going to be in this imagery that you're using or the language that you're using. And these should all be short and focused. And I'm gonna show you some examples, just so you know. Uh, this is not gonna be in a vacuum. I'm gonna show you some examples. Uh, of, of some of these ideas in one second. So I just wanna pause and see if anybody has any questions um, or if I'm good to go. Ryan, am I good? Dave, I have a question. Yes, hello. Um, it's Cindy. Um, with, with the issue of, you know, you were talking about what happens as soon as you get to camp. So mm -hmm. they need to be tested, COVID tested. Mm -hmm and they need to stay in cohorts. Mm -hmm. So do you have any great ideas for fun activities or will that come later? I mean, I, I think that we're in a bit of an anomaly. I think yeah. this is it. I think this is the last summer that we're gonna have to do that. And I think they're at a point where they understand that. So if you have to do it and then have fun, right? And, but just be honest about it. Say, it, say to them, normally we would not be doing this. Normally this is what it would look like, right? Normally we would get a, you know, I use this all the time just because I like them, but I, we would get a snow cone machine, right? And we'd put on music and we'd just hang out and get to know each other and talk and, you know, be by the pool or have a barbecue or whatever it is. This is how it normally looks. But, you know, we're in this strange world for one more summer where we have to get you tested and then we can go into the more fun, interesting parts of camp. Um, and if you have to just put people in charge of those cohorts of making sure you could have individual little parties, right? Hang out, hand out ice cream, yeah, right? Or, you know, put on music in different areas, right? Where they can kind of hang out. Because if they're in cohorts, they're going to be together. So they might as well get to know each other in that way. But you have to just set the expectations ahead of time, I think is important. Is that helpful, Cindy? Hopefully. Yeah, I think there's some, this is our first time back after three years. So mm -hmm. people are expressing already stress about not being able to hug each other and mm -hmm. not being able to see maybe their best friend from camp because they're in a different cohort and, you know, that kind of thing. So we're already thinking about, okay, how do we make this fun and still 
follow what we have to follow to make it safe and you know right. and i'm sure there's some like fun games if you're in a different cohort yeah. from your best friends there's a way to yell at each other across camp right with yeah. paper towel tubes or whatever it is and you know pretend you're pirates and you're yelling at each other from different ships or whatever it is right like yeah, there's good. ways to be creative about it um and have some fun and beverly beverly thinks that we're we're never going to get back to normal or it's going to be some time i'm more of an optimist and <laughs> all of the, the lawyers and doctors that I've been talking to you are confidently saying this could be the last of this type of intense testing and cohorting. And now some camps are choosing not to cohort, right? Some are choosing to cohort. It depends on where you are and what kind of camp and everybody has a different kind of take on it, but mm -hmm. think about how you can still create some of this magic. Yeah. That's it's good. important. That's good. Um, so, uh, <laughs> I know Beverly. <laughs> uh, uh, so I want to show you kind of one of these short subliminal messages that I kind of talked about. This is not from a camp per se. It's from a camp adjacent industry that works with camps. It's two minutes or so. So I'm going to show you this video. And I want you to think about like how easy this would be to do at your own camp. Okay. As a way to get your staff excited to come to camp. And it's it's very simple, it's fun, it's, it's, you have to excuse, it's a little jumpy because they did it on an iPhone without like a, a holder or anything, they just held a high iPhone. But I think you'll enjoy it and you'll get the idea of what I'm talking about. Hey guys, Jake Westerfeld here with Let's Talk Camps. They asked me to uh, come in here, Active Network Headquarters, where I work for Camps and Class Manager to talk a little bit about my camp experience as a kid. Now, I was a camper at Camp Stewart for Boys in Hunt, Texas. This is one of the best camps going right now. Uh, amazing property, really incredible scenery, but the best activities. These activities at this place are absolutely incredible. They have canoeing, uh, horseback riding, archery, the horseback riding alone is amazing. You have jumping and pole lacrosse. If you've never played pole lacrosse, it's lacrosse on horses. It's absolutely nuts. But some of my favorite activities, like riflery and things like that, I wanted to mail, you know, maybe not riflery, but I wanted to create some of these in the office. Can't do them like Camp Stewart does, but we try to do our best. Let's check it out. All right. So I loved tennis when I was at camp. We didn't have the tennis courts, at least they haven't built those tennis courts I asked for yet. But we got some ping pong. Got my boy Matt over here showing off. Oh, behind the back shot. Look at this guy. Under the leg. Good Lord. Look at it. Also, ceramics. Cold. Yeah. What you got going here? Making a snake. Snake. Making Love it. Snake. Keep going. Keep at it. Matt rolling still at it. What a champ. How's it going over here? Yeah, wow, good. yeah, that's a good snake, bottoms up. One of my other favorite, as I mentioned before, archery. Oh yeah, good, saved his life. William Tell at the max. And finally, my favorite, fencing. Oh, yes, the force is with you, my friend. All right, guys, so we got some of those some of my favorite activities here in the office at Active Network. One thing to notice, join us around the campfire on All right, so silly, right? Fun, really just tells you a lot about the personality, about camp, without having to be so specific. And you get to show off a little bit and have some fun. Uh, and it's literally two minutes. I'm going to guess that was a one take video, right? Uh, but again, you can probably do it, it's probably better quality now if you have a little holder where you can hold it up. I don't know if you can see me, I was holding, pretending I was holding. Uh, but you can make it a little, little better quality, but that, it's an easy idea, right? Um, so we have to make sure that we're kind of showing that. The other thing is you want them to get to know you, okay? So these are really, again, easy videos. They want to know who you are. They wanna know your personality. So there's this great company called The Muse. If you don't know about them, you should look them up. But on their website, they have, or they used to, I don't know if it's still there. They have a little circle and everybody's got their face in a circle and a video about them, 
right? So I'm gonna show you one of those videos. It's the co-founder and CEO. Um, now they use professional lighting, obviously, which makes it a little bit nicer, but again, it's simple. I think it's about a minute long. Um, Uh-oh. What just happened, Ryan? Oh, can you see that still? Okay, sorry. Um, so you'll see this video. Um, it's of the CEO. It's a minute and nine seconds. It's super easy. It's something that we can all do and we can you know, camp it up a little bit, make it a little bit more fun, but you'll get it. You get in a minute and nine seconds, you get to learn so much about the organization, about the person and about the culture. I'm Catherine Minshew, founder and CEO of The Muse, and we're here to create a trusted and beloved experience to help people navigate their careers and to help companies attract great employees. When I look ahead, what I'm really excited about with the future of The Muse is building the team. I'm really excited to continue investing in the product. Uh, we're working to make the site much more personalized, so the more that we know about a single individual in their career, the better we can help them with exactly what they need. And for companies, I think it's, um, you know, it hasn't always been easy in the past for companies to really share something that's unique about their culture. A lot of businesses put up, um, you know, a job post that says, we're a great place to work, but what does that actually mean? And I, I'm just really excited. We're starting to dig into the cultural attributes that make up different companies. And I think that matching, um, there's really a lot, of, a lot of magic in that potential. The ideal candidate to work at The Muse would be someone who is is passionate about what we do, someone who's generally curious about life, about learning things, um, just figuring out why things work and, and why people think the way they do and, uh, and all of that. And then I think um, we tend to have a pretty driven team and, um, and someone who's just a good person. It's really important. So again, super simple, super easy, one take. And you could talk instead of about somebody who, would, who you would hire, but somebody who would be successful at camp. Right? These are the attributes of somebody who's going to be successful at camp and go through some of those traits. Uh, so it's a really easy way for them to, again, get to know you in a different way, to get to feel your personality, learn more about camp. Any questions, comments about those? Just a couple of ideas for you. All right. So now we'll move more to staff training, right? So we'll move past, we're there, they're showing up, right? So you'll notice there's, there's some repetition here on purpose. So you take this mentor program and you move it into real life. So a lot of times camps will do a mentorship program before the summer and staff show up and you get into staff training. Well, what if we paired those people together during staff training? So Ryan and Dave have been spending all this time talking to each other online. Let's put them together in real life and make them buddies in real life at staff training. And you know, to go to Cindy's question, you have to make sure as you're setting it up before camp that you know what cohort they're gonna be in, if you're still cohorting, so they can actually interact with each other. Uh, it takes a little bit more planning, but really, what, and giving them something to do together, right? Um, get, make Ryan the lead, or Dave the leader, if Dave's leading Ryan, and say, okay, Dave, I'm gonna trust you to make sure that Ryan gets these five pieces of information and walks away feeling this, that's your job. And maybe give Dave a little extra money or some other perk to help him feel empowered. But again, putting those people together. I like to talk about something called death by paper, a little term that I copyrighted, not yet, but I will. Uh, and it's, it goes back to that idea of when they first show up and you hand them a stack of papers to sign. But the other thing um, that it talks about is a staff handbook. Raise your hand or, or throw in the chat, you have a little hand emoji, if you give out a staff handbook. Okay. Now, is it electronic or is it you print it out and hand it to them? Both. Ryan says both, Dave says both, Deb's electronic, electronic. Okay, raise your hand if it's over 20 pages. <laughs> Ryan's my number one test subject. Let me know if it's over 20 pages. Nobody wants to give it up. More than 20, Dave said it, Eva said it. Are you using 
graphics, images? Does it look like a textbook or does it look like an Instagram post? You don't have to answer. I'm, these are, I'm throwing these questions out there to get to my point. Death by paper. If your staff handbook is over 20 pages and it reads more like a manual than it does an Instagram post or, or I don't know, something else young people look at, then they're not reading it and they're not getting the information anyway. You're wasting paper, you're wasting your time and you're frustrating everybody because you get frustrated that they're not reading it and then they're frustrated that you're frustrated because they are thinking to themselves, well, how can they expect me to read this? I have all these other things going on. So think really carefully. And I, I work with camp specifically about camp staff handbooks. I have edited staff handbooks that were over 150 pages down to 12. Okay. So it's really important that you understand your audience and that it looks like something that they will actually look at. Now, this is coming from somebody who in one of my first camp jobs, I was a leadership member and they hand out the staff handbook. And in the middle of it, there's a secret like phrase that says on you know Saturday of staff orientation, wear a tie to staff orientation. And I didn't read it and I didn't show up with a tie and I was a leadership member and I learned my lesson. So, because I didn't read it because it was long. And I probably had something better to do, I thought. So really think carefully about what you're handing out. So thank you for answering questions either out loud or in your head. Ooh, Gail, in a fanny pack. I like it. All right. Again, going back to telling your story, keep it all consistent. So all that messaging that you were doing before camp you should be showing that at camp. It should be on the walls. It should be on the screens. If you're doing sessions, you know, in a theater, right? Where you're doing PowerPoints, put those pictures up, put that, that language up everywhere that you can um, and make sure that they understand this is the culture. This is the language. This is what we're going for. This is the feel of camp, right? Keep it consistent and keep it going. And if you're doing videos, again, short and topical. I keep repeating that short and topical like we saw two minutes right easy to film easy to come up with make it funny make it interesting put yourself out there make it goofy that's okay camp that i directed with my best friend who i met at the picture you the camp of the picture you saw me in we used to do every year we would do what we called ad staff that was our leadership staff we would do a kind of intro video and we would spoof a tv show so one year it was the Sopranos where he was Tony Soprano riding around on a power wheels around camp, right? Um, one, and then we would do music videos sometimes of popular songs. It all depended on what was popular at the time, but we would do these spoofs. We did like a real housewives spoof with all of the ad staff where we all had our own little intro, right? And, you know, said like, I'm Dave, you know, I don't, you know, I believe in programming or whatever my line was, I don't remember. Um, but you know, do things like that that are funny and, and goofy and putting yourselves out there because you're gonna expect them to do that. Um, then I'm gonna say this again, is it camp? As you think about staff training, I know there's topics that we have to cover, right? But are there things that we can shorten? Are there things that we can do beforehand, right? Are there other resources, right? I've talked about, AM Sky or other resources, right? Like expert online training or other online resources. ACA has tons of resources, the American Camp Association online. I know that Redwoods who they have a partnership with, if you're an ACA member now, you can have access to a ton of their videos. Are there things that we can manage beforehand that we can then make staff training feel a little bit more like camp? And that goes back to what I said in the beginning about what should the first moments feel like? And I understand COVID testing and all that, but I think with some explanation, they'll understand that. What do some of those first moments feel like? Right? What does it feel like work or does it feel like camp? And, and what do you want it to feel like? Be intentional and thoughtful about it. What do you want that moment to be like 
when they're first there and when they're there for staff training? What do you want them to feel? How do you want them to feel? Um, something else that I think is really important is that you keep it light at night. So anything you do after dinner should not be risk management. You shouldn't have me come do your Skyer talk about you know safe touch and rule of three at nine o'clock at night. Anything you do at night should be fun and interesting. After dinner is not a time to bring up these serious topics. Okay. So also during staff training, as you're going through all of your, your, your stuff, does it make sense? Think about how much info is too much. Does it confuse? Is it clarifying? What message are you sending, right? Really think these through. And you'll notice, you know, if you, if you saw any of my other presentations I did a few months ago or tonight or Ryan's seen a bunch of, I don't put a lot on the screen, right? This is the most, what you're seeing tonight is the most I ever put on. It's usually a lot of pictures and very few words uh, because it's information overload. So think about what information you're putting out there and what, you, what the essentials are um, and what can be filled in later. I talk to camps all the time about why are you spending so much time showing them how to eat and where the bathrooms are. If they're adults, which they all should be, they will figure out where to go to the bathroom and how to eat, get food. Uh, that will be apparent. I have camps who spend half a day doing that. Um, and to me, it doesn't make sense. Anybody, you can raise your hand, not raise your hand, think about this internally. Do you hand out a schedule that looks like this? in some way. I hope it's nobody on this call. Think about if you're 19, 20, 21 years old, you don't work at camp full time, you're a counselor, and somebody hands you this, says this is what the staff training week looks like, don't miss anything. What? Can they interpret that? Do they have any idea what any of this is? When they're supposed to be anywhere? To me even, and I've been doing this a long time, I'm lost. I wouldn't show up where I'm supposed to be. So instead, do something like this. Make a daily schedule that kind of gets them together. I did this myself and I am not a talented graphic artist at all, right? Gives them lunch, dinner times. What's for lunch and dinner? There's a talent show tonight. Um, things that they need to remember right? Um, ask lots of questions, what to expect, right? I mean, and then this turns into a daily newsletter at camp, okay? It's not overwhelming. It's graphic. It gives key information. On the back, you'd want to put some sort of note section, have some sort of ongoing. So if you see in the bottom right, there's a little quiz. Um, if you get that answer right, Jennifer will give you a prize. She won't, but you can still answer it. The question is, how old was her? Professor Dave in the picture of him at camp. Um, and then this again can become a daily staff newsletter. You have the format, just fill it in. Let's see who got it right. R well, Ryan, that's cheating. You know me too well. All right. So this is in lieu of giving out this really complicated schedule. On the back, you could have a note section and just a schedule for the day. Counselors, specialists, whatever, right? Here's the very simple, here's where you should be today. Um, and change, again, it's changing culture. It's getting them more engaged. It's a little more interesting to look at. And this is very easy. I think uh, I did this on, I forgot what program, but it's very easy and I'm sure you all can do it. Okay, when you're at camp, talk about goals. I hold do a whole other session. I'm happy to talk to you about it offline when we have more time about goals and asking staff what their goals are and using it as a feedback tool as well as a follow-up and conversation starter. Um, and I have a whole uh, form for that. Um, talk about peer-to-peer -peer recognition, get them to recognize each other. So you're not run running around trying to congratulate everybody for doing a good job. They can congratulate each other. Ryan, I saw you at the rock wall yesterday. Um, you did great, thank you so much. Um, all right tell their story, right? Let them, if they have a period off, say, you know what, during your period off, whatever your cell phone policy is, I don't know what everybody's is. I'm assuming most of you don't allow it, but on their period off, 
give them the opportunity to say, you know what, if you want to go around camp and take selfies of yourself by the lake or by a special place or by a rock that you really like or whatever it is, feel free. Go ahead and post it and tell all your friends how jealous and make them jealous. So they want to work here next summer, right? Give them some flexibility. Don't have this strict rule where they can't do anything. You know, I think of some place, um, I think of, or have them upload it onto one of your computers, right? And have somebody manage your Instagram for staff. So they can upload their images if you don't have cell phone service and they could put it up on an Instagram account using a computer, right? Whatever, whatever works for you. Um, but I think of Austin, Texas, that 20 years ago, nobody was going to Austin, Texas as a tourist, right? And then when Instagram became to get more popular, they put up all these moments around Austin, Texas, where you could take a selfie of yourself, right? With graffiti and angel wings and whatever it is. And Austin became this huge destination. And now it's one of the top three most popular cities in the country. Um, and that's just by giving people moments and saying, here's the moment you can take a picture of yourself and then post it and tag all your friends um, so, who aren't here. So they wanna be part of this. Um, make sure you answer questions and that you have these kind of continued professional development opportunities throughout the summer. Make them short, make them targeted, five minutes, right? Here's a behavior management piece that I just really wanna share with you know 10 people at a time, right? I know it's been a struggle. Here's, here's five tips for you, okay? And just, you could do it standing up in the middle of camp, right? Where other things are going on and just take their attention for five minutes and give them some professional development. Um, to me, this is all part of staff training still. Um, when you're at staff training, have a questions bucket up at the front or in a central location where they can just drop questions in. Um, make sure you're stopping once in a while. I say every 15 or 20 minutes, have an energizer, have them get up, have them walk around. Um, have a wheel of questions where you, you kind of just ask questions of things that you've been covering and hand out five bucks if they get the question right. Uh, have some sort of graffiti wall where they can ask questions or write each other encouraging notes on a whiteboard somewhere. Again, just ways for them to be more engaged and you get a better sense of what they're thinking about, what they're curious about, what they're getting and what they're not getting. I know I'm going quickly, it's because I want to get through everything. But I can, you have, you'll watch the recording and you always know you can email me. Um, when it comes to ongoing professional development at camp, again, make it kind of these micro learning opportunities. They're used to this. Credentials are becoming much more popular. Micro credentials are becoming more popular. They're used to kind of these quick bursts of information, right? Again, leave a question bucket somewhere. And if a question keeps coming up in this question bucket, Take care of it. Answer the question in small groups. Does it have to be at everybody at once? Find opportunities to take them for five minutes and just talk to them. That daily staff newsletter that I showed you, you can share so much information with that newsletter. Um, it doesn't have to be anything that campers can't see, right? Everything that's on that newsletter, campers might, maybe they should see, right? Maybe that's okay. Um, and again, this idea of peer to peer recognition, like, wow, Ryan, you know what? I'm, I'm a lifeguard at the pool. You were with your group at the pool yesterday. I was having a hard time. You stepped in. Thank you for helping me. Um, encourage those kinds of conversations. So as we get to the end here, I have seven key takeaways because I love leaving people with practical ideas. Keep whatever you're doing consistent. So whatever you're starting to do now in terms of language and branding and images, keep it consistent, repetitive. Don't veer off. Um, use Instagram as an education tool, right? Show them what camp is. Show them what camp is all about. Talk about the culture. Talk about the language. I've said it a lot tonight that being intentional is very important. Really think through these decisions. Remember the curse of knowledge. It's real. So one of the things that I always like to say to, staff, to camp directors is one of the first things you should do at a, at a staff training because they, you give them their job description, but do they know your job description? Do they have any idea what you do every day? Show them your job description, show them your day, show them your 10 things that you do every hour, whatever it is. Let them understand what your role is and what goes into running camp. Ask them more questions 
again, this questions bucket is really easy. You just put some a bucket or a, almost like a suggestion box and say, if you have any questions and you can't catch me or, or you don't know who to ask, throw it in this bucket, we're gonna look at it every day and then we'll get you the answer. And it can be anonymous, it doesn't have to be named. This idea of a giving culture where they acknowledge each other for doing something that's helpful. So again, thank you so much, Ryan, for helping me at the pool. It really made my day. It made my life so much easier. I can't thank you enough. That's something that they look for when they, when they do studies about, um, even at places like Goldman Sachs and big banks, about what makes teams most effective. It's this idea of peer-to-peer -peer recognition when they help each other and encourage each other. And then only do what you can and do it really well. So everything I talked about tonight are just ideas and suggestions and hopefully they're helpful, but you can't do everything. And you can't do everything in the next two months, but hopefully you can take some of it, even if it's one or two of these ideas and do them really, really well and then build on that for next summer. So that's all I've got. And I am more than happy to take, oh, one last picture. So that's me again, that's me. This is my older brother and he's actually riding the maintenance bike. So the summer after this, when I was 13, I became a maintenance boy, okay? And the second year you were a maintenance boy, if you were like the head maintenance boy, you got a bike that let you bike around camp and pick up the garbage. So imagine that 12 year old, cause I didn't look much different when I was 13, 14, maybe 15, still pretty small, scrawny guy. I had to go around this bike and pick up giant 40 gallon bags of trash and put them in the dumpster. So that my brother was a couple of years ahead of me and he had the bike. And then that's Elon Shai who really didn't like new kids on the block, obviously by his t-shirt. Um, he wasn't a fan, I guess. Um, and then we have a Red Sox fan in there who we don't talk about because we were in New York. I don't know why he was wearing a Red Sox. Yeah. But that's all I've got, everybody. Thank you for your time. Thanks for listening. Thanks for participating. I am more than happy to take pet, uh, questions. I think Dave Caterino might be a Red Sox fan. It's okay, so, we can be friends. We can still be friends, Dave. It's okay, we're, we're two Daves just living in different places with different <laughs> teams, one with more World Series championships than the other, that's all. <laughs> uh, so happy to take questions. So Dave, a lot of our uh, members are one week camp. So their uh, staff training is typically one day, maybe yep. one and a half days. So if you had to split up the pie between three different things, what percentage would you allot to um, trying to build a culture and have everybody bond, the technical stuff, and then the stuff that the state requires us to cover? So I think a lot of the bonding in that situation happens before camp. I think that's where these technology tools come in really, really handy and where you can do a lot of this. So I, I didn't get into a lot of detail about it, but I think calls like this, Zoom calls like this are amazing. And you make them themed. You have costume contests, you have s'more making contests, you have judges, you give out prizes, they get to know each other. You do them as often as you can. You record them so people can watch them. And even if they're not there, they're getting a sense of what your culture is. Right, this is what it feels like. We're fun. It's not just when you get to camp because you have to do the state required piece. I would never say don't do that. The technical pieces are important. I do think there's ways now to do that through technology as well. A little bit harder to accomplish, especially in the environments that you're in. But I think that if you're looking for culture building, I think it's important. But I think a lot of it can be done beforehand. And we should take advantage um, of those opportunities and really do as much as we can beforehand, before they get to camp. Cause it's gonna feel great for them to come to camp and already recognize people, but also feel, and also feel, oh, I know what's gonna happen when I get there. It's gonna be fun, it's a fun place, right? Uh, we're gonna do these activities, right? And they can do it. If you live in a dorm, you can go to your dorm kitchen, right? And make a s'mores, right? It could be funny, right? What's your favorite? It's more to make, right? How do you do it in your dorm room without hopefully burning it down, right? 
We don't want to encourage that. Um, but you can do it anywhere. Um, so really just doing those types of things where it's fun, it's not required, right? But they'll see it. And, and helping them engage with each other online also, setting up these groups and these mentorship programs and giving them guided questions, right? In these groups, not just opening up a Facebook group for your staff and saying, go at it. Have somebody responsible for guiding the conversations and talking about their experiences and what to expect and those types of things and monitoring it and make sure it's happening. Um, those, those are the types of things I think, because you do still need to build culture, but you can't sacrifice those important topics that you need to cover. Um, and that's a way to do it. Thanks for the question, Ryan. Great question. That's why he's one of my students. I taught him that. Any other questions, concerns, comments? We can talk baseball early in the season, so who knows, but nobody else? Well, it's good to see a lot of uh, familiar faces again. It's good to see you all. Uh, I wish you all a fantastic summer. Uh, have a great, great time. Good luck. If you need anything at all, I'm going to throw my, my email in there again so you have, so you can reach out and uh, feel free to, to reach out, get in touch. Let me know if anything comes up. Um, remember, I'm an AM, if you're an AM Skyer camp, I am a AM Skyer partner. So I'm available all summer to answer questions that you might have, uh, not lawyer questions, because I only play one of those on TV and no doctor questions either. Uh, my dad was, is retired now. He was a psychiatrist. I'm not one of those either. Um, so, but everything else I can do. What does that doctor. mean? What does that What's mean that? about the AMS, the AMSCAR? Oh, so AMSCAR is the insurance company that all the camps use and I'm one of their partners. So there's about 20 of us that are available all summer to answer questions for camps if something comes up at camp. Um, so I work for that insurance company. They insure about 800 camps around the country. Right. There, we, we utilize them. I just had never okay. heard that yeah, benefit. You actually, <laughs> you actually should have gotten an email today that had all of us, all of our headshots on it. I think I got okay. it today. Um, but yeah, you can call, there's an 800 number. Um, you can reach out to me directly. Um, and they kind of, they, they divide, you know, they take the calls and they, they put them in the right direction, but I'm always happy to help anytime. So Deb, we use them at Happiness is Camping and uh, they come in and staff training and do a lot of the sensitive issues and the serious stuff that I'm uncomfortable talking about. And, you know, they have firsthand knowledge and all of it. And so I get to focus on the fun. They do the serious stuff and everybody benefits. So definitely recommend using that. Well, yeah, you. I do. I do about, I think I'm, uh, I just got my schedule today so far. I think I have about 25 of those that I'm doing so far. Um, a few on Zoom, but mostly in person. Um, and they're about an hour long. Um, and we have never had, since we started doing this, any camp that has had the workshop has not had any um, instances of child abuse, inappropriate touch, any of that at their camp. So our first question is if, if a camp calls and says something happened, our first question is, did you have the workshop? And the answer is always no. It's really, really effective. Uh, we've been doing it for almost 20 years now. And again, like Ryan said, it, it takes the pressure off of you of having to talk about some of those sensitive topics and I think a different voice makes a difference. Yep. Well, Professor Dave, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Um, hope to see everybody on Wednesday to hear about early successes and how our fellow COCA members have already done it successfully in 2022 without COVID. So have a great night, everybody. Thank you for being here. Hi, good night. Thanks. Thank you, Professor Dave.